Typically when a video game is based on a movie, it's not a great game. However, there are plenty of titles that are spawned from films that are really good. Games like GoldenEye, Chronicles of Riddick, even Scarface was a really fun game. How many babies have you eaten today, Kaspar, huh? Baby, what the fuck? In 2005, Rockstar released The Warriors. Now, Rockstar is known for their Grand Theft Autos and their Red Dead Redemptions, but some of their smaller titles are some real gems. Games like Bully and Manhunt, they all have significant cult followings to say the least, but The Warriors is a Rockstar title I rarely see anyone speak of, and honestly, it's gotta be one of my favorite Rockstar games of all time, and it is massively underrated. Yeah, man! I, I got caustic phobicness! <laughs> The Warriors is a 3D beat em up brawler action adventure game. It's based on the 1979 Walter Hill movie of the same name, which is in turn loosely based on the 1965 novel, again, the same name. In 2005, The Warriors the Game was released and it was actually Rockstar's first HD title, premiering at 720p on the OG Xbox. So what is The Warriors anyway? Disregarding the novel, The Warriors movie was an obscure and weird movie from the late 70s, a sort of dystopian New York City that is overrun by street gangs, hundreds of gangs all based out of every little neighborhood of the city. It follows a Coney Island gang called the Warriors and their adventures after getting framed for a murder of a dude named Cyrus in a citywide gang meetup in the Bronx. They end up getting chased all the way back home to Coney Island by several murderous gangs that are out for their blood. It's a great movie, it's a weird movie, and you should probably watch it. The game takes this story and develops on it in an immense way. It's mostly a prequel to the events of the movie. It takes place several months before Cyrus got whacked. It actually goes back even further. It overviews how the Warriors came to even be. An all original story is developed by the Rockstar writing team that makes this game not so much of a licensed title, but more of a tie-in, an actual canon story that goes much further than anything the movie provides to these characters. The first two thirds is original concept action from Rockstar and the later one third are events from the movie, but they are done in such an honoring way. They are shot for shot remakes of some of the scenes and they just come out beautifully. So what is the purpose of this game? Is this game just about running around and fist fighting a bunch of other gangs like old school beat em ups? I mean, yeah, kind of. But there is so much more to it that makes it so special and that's why I think it's so underrated. The gameplay is primarily fighting and it's rarely 1v1. It's a brawling game. I'm talking about fights of a dozen plus people sometimes. It's crazy, but in the best way possible. It's a linear story progression game as well, most levels being unique and bringing you to new neighborhoods to do hood rat shit with your friends. Besides fighting, there are a ton of other activities available to you. Well, rockstar-ish activities. You got your looting and casual theft, you got your mugging, you got your graffiti, and so on. The little twisting of the screws to steal the car radio seems like the grandpappy mechanic to the Red Dead Redemption 2's wagon wheel replacement. It was a little more novel of a mechanic back in 2005 I think though. Same with this janky mechanic to tag the walls using the joystick. I use a controller to play games at least twice a year so my joystick skills suck and these little graffiti mini games were a pain in the ass. It's mostly pure brawler action though, more than a decent combat system. It's no Arkham Asylum, but it gets the job done. You have weak and strong attacks as well as a grab move that can all be combined into various different combinations. The environment plays a big part as well. You can throw a dude into another dude. You can ground and pound. If you're standing close to a wall, you can smash a motherfucker's face in. On top of that, you get various weapons to play with, from bricks and bottles to baseball bats and fucking machetes. Old school game fighting, which means no guns, at least that you can use, you will be getting shot at occasionally though. The weapons typically only last 2-3 to three hits before breaking so there isn't any kind of inventory management here. There are actually only 3 real resources you need to care about in this game. You got your spray can so you can tag your sloppy W's everywhere, flash which is your healing source, it's, it's just cocaine, cocaine heals you in this game. And then money is the final resource, it's used to buy the spray cans and coke off shady dealers and alleyways. 
simplistic is good here though because of how chaotic these fights can get. There can be a dozen or more people brawling at the same time so you don't want a super advanced combat system. Mashing square in a group that big is hard enough while trying not to smack up your own gang members. And these group fights are some of the best moments in the game. I love swinging a bat to knock out several people's heads as they all try to fight me or just running full speed and throwing my body into the group knocking them all down like a bunch of bowling pins. Many beat-em-ups can become stale after waves and waves of enemies, but the Warriors avoids this by incorporating some decent side objectives and exploration, as well as some awesome story progression to keep you going. The gameplay also ventures into stealth missions as well and butt-clenching chase sequences. It's kind of mixed the gameplay of their previous title, State of Emergency, which was a brawler, and Manhunt, which was more of a stealth-based game. Warriors is heavily inspired by both of these titles. Gangs also vary in level of difficulty. None are incredibly easy to push over though. Gangs like Destroyers and Orphans aren't the toughest, but there are usually a lot of them, while gangs like Turnbull ACs or the Furies are a lot harder to deal with. Cops though are the hardest to fight. You can evade them if you hide out in the shadows. There are some missions, like in the Blackout mission though, where cops won't leave no matter what, and they are a giant pain to deal with. Hey, what do we got here, huh? One of the tough guys from the Bronx? Yeah, he's tough. If you followed my channel for any amount of time, you know that I like me some atmosphere, and the Warriors is compliant here. The overall level and character design is faithful to the movie. The game takes you through several neighborhoods and boroughs of New York, from the home turf of Coney Island to the Bronx, Manhattan, Soho, and plenty more traveling via subway. Looks a lot like other Rockstar titles at the time, such as Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, Manhunt, Red Dead Revolver, all made by different production houses, but most Rockstar assets and technologies are shared across the board. And like most Rockstar titles, it immerses you in a world that feels at once authentic and highly stylized. It may just be one of the best game adaptations on a movie in terms of capturing the feel and the atmosphere of the movie. They adapted the brawler beat em up genre into a game that doesn't feel nearly as linear as other games in the genre. Rockstar is great at making this game and many others feel like a true open world. You feel like you're in a living, breathing city even though size wise the levels are more closely related to Manhunt rather than Grand Theft Auto. What the Warriors excels at is tying the game and the movie together. The movie had an almost parodied look at gangs in the 70s, in a dystopian version of New York, overrun by fist fighting gangs. The game interpretation of the movie events are spectacular, but the original ideas brought into play for the majority of the game just showed the talent that Rockstar has for writing and filling in the blanks to the plot that was underdeveloped for the movie. No one wrote home about the graphics at the time of release, so needless to say 15 years later, these character models aren't looking too hot. The camera movement and the controls feel generally pretty dated as well, but this doesn't take away too much from the feeling that this game gives you. It's perpetually nighttime on these grungy and gritty streets from Coney to Soho to Spanish Harlem. It's not the most atmospheric game out there, but you get some strong vibes from the dirty city that is run by these gangs and crooked cops. It may seem odd for a game to be developed on such an obscure and weird movie, but it fits Rockstar's aesthetic and they were able to transform the source material in a brilliant way. Not simply retelling the film, but adding huge amounts of backstory and character development that just simply didn't exist in the movie. It took the fist fighting gang action of the movie and made one of the best 3D era beat em ups to exist. The game starts off by showing the critical moment of the film, Cyrus's murder as he gathers the gangs in New York for a meeting. After this intro, you're taken back several months to the Warriors in Coney Island and begin the game as a small time gang trying to make a name for themselves. This adds so much more development than the movie did to the characters, making moments that happen later on in the game that are reflected in the movie much more impactful as you become more attached to particular characters. Typically in Rockstar games, you don't play as the good guys just because they are the protagonist. The Warriors are still a street and violence is the way of life in this version of 1970s New York. You spend your time looting, mugging, fighting, and of course, casually murdering. The script is filled with language as dirty as the environment, and it's clear from the beginning the Warriors are not some Boy Scouts. But you do come to admire these guys, or at least empathize with what they're doing. The only point of view you're given in this universe is making it as a street gang. There is no other option. The Warriors is a gang made up of several characters, but the main playable guys are Cleon, Swan, Ajax, and Rembrandt. You do play as a few others, but 
these guys you start to understand a bit more. Cleon is the leader or the war chief as they call him. Swan is his right hand man. Ajax is the muscle and Rembrandt is the artist. These guys all have unique attitudes and even fighting styles and the voice acting is top notch as well. Most of the film's actors reprise their roles and the dialogue is written spectacularly well. Something Rockstar Studios tend to put a lot of time and effort into. And with a completely new storyline involving creating a whole new gang, the Destroyers, not seen in the movie at all, to show the formation of the Warriors. The original members left the Destroyers after being backstabbed by that gang's leader. It shows their struggle to gang some rep as a new gang and eventually being recognized by some of the most respected gangs in New York. You just become attached to these guys and become invested in what's happening, even more so if you've seen the film. It's all canon. I sunk so many hours into this game when it came out. Everything about it just resonated with the younger me and playing it through today, a lot of that magic still shines through. Me and my buddies also used to play the multiplayer a lot. There's a lot of fun mini games like Last Man Standing after throwing a bunch of people off the roofs or racing wheelchairs down the street. It was just tons of fun. It's no Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead Revolver, but it's a respectable one-off title by Rockstar and I feel like it isn't talked about enough considering it's probably one of my favorite Rockstar titles of all time. Thanks for spending the time with me here today. I hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you next time. Peace. Yeah, you can crawl down the coney if you got something to say, fool. Come on. We're done here. Let's go. Look at you!